Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Since we're in the winter season, January of 2019, you know, a brand new year, and I'm also wearing my brand new Joe Cool t-shirt, why not review a peanut special, which came out on February 21st, 1978 on CBS. It's called What a Nightmare, Charlie Brown. This is a very dark and chilling special unlike any other and this is the only special that features both Charlie Brown and Snoopy both of which are my favorite characters of the whole Peanuts game and this is a very rare one too in fact I first saw this on the Disney Channel when it aired uh, as part of the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show when they had a free preview uh, back in 1994 and it really works well for it too because you know it's a snowy day and it's about Charlie Brown just teaching Snoopy how to to mush you know because he's the sleigh master and he wants uh, Snoopy to to mush around on his sleigh but it also focuses on Snoopy's nightmare where he was dreamed that he was an arctic dog that's uh, being controlled by his master who's very cruel. He also has all five Arctic dogs joining in besides him and this is where they go around exploring the this entire race in Alaska. So this was very creepy but in, in, in a good way. you know. And I indeed love this one too because um, out of all the peanut specials and movies that we have they went for a different route and I like the fact that they went for a dark chilling tale so this is supposed to be based on The Call of the Wild by Jack London so it's always interesting to see what happens next so. but you got two directors Phil Roman and Bill Melendez uh, you know working on onto the story and you got Ed Bogus uh, providing the music like any other with with a mix of uh, synthesizers and stuff. Um, also to note, uh, as a tribute, was just recently uh, one of the animators, which is Don Lusk, who only lived up to 105, just passed away. And he actually had worked on all the Disney, uh, all the Disney animated features uh, in the 30s and 40s and stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's he's been a long-time animator, and he had worked on all the Penis specials, too, you know, from time to time. But he will be missed, but he sure lived a long life. Um, anyway, let, let's get to it. It stars only two characters. Yep. Charlie Brown and Snoopy, both played by Bill Melendez and Liam Martin. It's created and written by Charles M. Schultz, and it's directed by two directors, Bill Melendez and Phil Wilman. The special begins during one winter day when Charlie Brown just got out of the house and brought in his sleigh so he'll be able to ride with Snoopy by connecting him to the harness into the sleigh and he'll be able to control under Charlie Brown's command. But then Snoopy just gave up. He decided to take off his harness and decided to push Charlie Brown all the way down into a slope and straight into the snowman and that's where the title sequence pops up. <laughs> so then Charlie Brown decided to do it again and actually try to teach Snoopy how to mush. But he's either lazy and he just doesn't want to push it and then he tries to do it and he just couldn't budge so uh, Charlie Brown decided to explain to him that Arctic dogs are meant to start moving around as fast as they can under their command so then Charlie Brown decided to teach him by actually wearing the harness and that's when Snoopy just got on top of the sleigh and he actually grabs a rip and he just <laughs> 
And under his command, he just does it exactly what he's supposed to do. So Charabon is like running as fast as he can. <laughs> All the way around the snowman and everywhere. Until, you know, he was out of breath. So, came back into the house. And then Snoopy decided to uh, make himself some pizza with a shake. <laughs> and he only made like, I believe, six pizzas. They put in the oven. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, at first you just saw him uh, put in two pizzas inside, but it's actually more than that in the oven. Yeah, I guess that's just how continuity works. <laughs> but then um, Charlie Brown came, you know, telling the Snoopy that Art the Dogs only had to be fed once a day. You know, like raw fish and meat, but, well... Snoopy just felt like, ah, it's disgusting. Um, it sucks to be them. So he just, that particular attitude. And then, and Charlie Brown just says to him that you're overly civilized. I hope you digest all that food. Well, he just went back to bed, you know, on his dog house. And that's when he started feeling uh, very gassy. Yeah, coming from his stomach, he's getting all these uh, cramp pains. And that's when he dreamed that, yes, he was in the Arctic. That's when the, the sleigh owner suddenly uh, tells him to go, along with the, the six uh, sleigh dogs, to join in. Um, it turns out that, yes, he was being made as a sleigh dog for the Arbor Rod Trail Sleigh Dog Race in Alaska. So it was. It, it suddenly happened during the Klondike Gold Rush, or in some cases, the 1925 Surum Run to Nome, that sort of way. But Snoopy's been cruelly mistreated completely. You know, most of the time, he never gets a chance to get a drink of water or even eat raw fish and meat because all the dogs started to attack him and growl at him. Every time, even worse, um, they you know they started to howl at one of the other dogs uh, far away. You know during that one night, and it happens every night. Yeah, they just never let him do anything, and and that sucks. Also, to note that um, the sleigh owner does have a deeper voice. It's not your traditional. Wah, 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 No, it's something much deeper than that, like, Whoa, 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 That sort of way. And Snoopy was freezing, too. Yeah, because he was trying so hard to warm himself up. He even uh, built his own uh, doghouse uh, under uh, snow, because, well... He tries to uh, yeah, make a fire, but but he sneezed. So he had no choice. But then, um, as it turns out, um, he actually winds up at a Hockey Talk bar. It's a local bar that's uh, around this, the entire uh, town, yeah, western town, during the winter. Um, Snippy was very hungry because, of course, he'll never had a chance to eat because of the dogs. Uh, he, he first got into the bar, but he got kicked out. And then later, you know, he got back inside, and then he found out there was a sandwich that's on the piano. So he grabs the sandwich, and then suddenly the song, uh, the Washington Post March plays. It plays automatically, so it's one of those automatic uh, pianos. <laughs> and then, yeah, he had the sandwich, he was laughing, you know, that, that laugh that you may have heard on, on that uh, Peanuts uh, laughing Snoopy doll that I have, yeah, if you recognized it. And then, <laughs> he has a mug of root beer along with it, and then afterwards, uh, all the, um, <laughs> all of the customers started to pour all that, those coins, those gold coins, into the mug. He drinks it, thinking this would be a refill of root beer. But he spits it out. <laughs> and he's just 
he, he just knew that they were playing a joke on him, so he just... <laughs> but then, you know, he was laughing, then he suddenly went straight into the piano and moves around, then he stops. Then he just grabs the mug of, of all these gold coins and decided to play poker. And yes, this is where, uh, you know, he's just, he keeps a poker face. He's beginning to find out what kind of uh, ace hearts or any other, or even the kings, queens, whatever. See if, if one of them match, so that way, you know, he'll be able to win all of that. And he did. He won um, the poker game. But then the whole crowd goes wild. Yeah. And, and of course, yeah, the crowd did start laughing at him too. Uh, you know, when when he pulled a joke at him. <laughs> oh. Then he wants up going straight into a, a stage show where he started doing a dance number, uh, where it has that painted backdrop of Paris Flans. So he was doing everything until you know all of the crowd started throwing all these vegetables at him. Yeah, you know, raving boo at him. So now, um, got kicked out, and wants up um, in a race with the dogs, and it just repeats the same thing as usual. Until he just couldn't take it anymore. And that's when Snoopy just breaks down crying. Because once he's done, he decided that he decided to make a bigger change to, in order for him to survive. That's where he starts to bear his fangs and started to walk towards all these dogs and decided to make his own revenge on them. So now he gets to do everything that they, these dogs have been doing and actually scaring them off. You know, growling with all the sharp teeth <laughs> around. So now he gets to have the food, the water, and he even gets to howl the same way that those dogs do. So that's been going on. And yes, even Snoopy got to fight with one of the Arctic dogs, and that is uh, the brown one. And that was a very, uh, that was a very uh, interesting massacre that they went for. In fact, a very strong massacre. But Snoopy won the battle for that. I mean, geez, I mean, there's no blood in it, though. There's You don't see any blood going around, spurting out, but it, it's... But it was a really nice, clean fight. But then they just keep on going, you know, all the way from from all these other um, the, all these other areas until suddenly they wind up going straight into the icy uh, lake, and that's when all all the ice starts to crack, which led to the owner and the Arctic dogs to drown, with only Snoopy left. Uh, trying to hang on till he finally woke up and realized that all of this was a dream. So then he went up to Charlie Brown and to explain his nightmare so that way he can go back to sleep with Charlie Brown but first he had to have some nice cold ice cream. <laughs> you know we put some you know chocolate syrup you know sprinkles and all the way around you know just for uh, yeah, just for a late night snack, and then he finally went back to sleep with Charlie Brown. Well, there you go. That's a special. And I really love it. Um, but very uh, dark and chilling. But it really works because um, at least now we get to see what Snoopy's been going up to after all these years. And I thought it was interesting because usually when Snoopy does get all of his nightmares or any other dreams that he does, it's mostly about uh, him dreaming about you know, him battling the the Red Baron you know, when he was the World War One flying ace. That happened in the, a boy named Charlie Brown. So that that means he had to go all the way back to inside Charlie Brown's house and starts to sleep inside his room. <laughs> But this time it's about him dreaming about becoming an Arctic dog and how life just wasn't working for him until he suddenly changes. And that was amazing. Um, 
Uh, the animation was very stunningly beautiful. You feel bad for Snoopy for having to to be mistreated uh, cruelly. I mean, I, I swear to God, the, the owner is such an ass. I mean, why couldn't he just give him some food if, if he was going to feed the his Arctic dogs? You know, if, if they're so um, vicious and cruel. I mean, why, why can't they just give Snoopy, you know, half of it, too? I mean, that, that's just not fair. And, and yeah, you can even tell how creepy he is, considering that you only see a silhouette of him. So you don't really see him, per se. You know, you don't see his face. Um, but you sure do see a lot of close-ups of the dogs, and, you know, considering how... How scary looking they were. Um, I also love the music that they chose. You know, there's a mix of um, synthesizers, all done by Ed Bogus himself. Uh, especially with the Washington Post March, which really works well. And of course, who couldn't forget the song "On the Lead Dog" by All of Lee Civilized Dog, where it's played in the background while he's making some pizza. A shake and then later the ice cream sundae <laughs> yeah it, it just works because now you can tell how hungry Snoopy is e even if he had a nightmare <laughs> and another reason why I love this special though is that we do get to see Snoopy's point of view about what was it like if he was one of the Arctic dogs it's kind of messed up though to actually see a regular dog uh, teaming up with the rest of these giant uh, vicious Arctic dogs together. Yeah, consider how small he is. Yeah. And it, and it basically we get to see exactly how scary it looks. I mean, not the kind of scary that you see in horror movies, but this kind of scary. But it is pretty sad too to see a Snoopy being mistreated this way. You really do feel bad for him. Um and yes, uh, there is a bit of, uh, well, I guess it seems like it, that there is a bit of a death scene, mostly for the dogs and and uh, the owner, because they drowned in that very crucial end. But that's exactly how disturbing the special really was. But hey... At least they took the guts to do so. Also to note that Bill Melendez uh, first directed the special after a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, but it's nice to know that he was working together with uh, Phil Roman because Phil Roman at the time was the current director of the specials that follow. So it's nice to know that they're working together, you know, creating a, a very interesting one. Um, also with the editors uh, Roger Donnelly and Chuck McCain I think it's the same Chuck McCain you know who's done a lot of acting stuff but, or maybe it might be a different one um, and I always find it interesting that this special didn't feature any of the Peanuts uh, gang cast members so and seeing that Charlie Brown and Snoopy are, are one of my favorite characters of the Peanuts gang it's probably one of the only uh, specials where we only featured both of them. So I love that. And I almost wish that we had more specials like that too. You know, with both Charlie Brown and Snoopy. <laughs> but that was just the case. Um, but I highly recommend it though, but just be aware, it, it is disturbing. So anyway, that's What a Nightmare, Charlie Brown, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.